Hello, good morning viewers, and welcome back to part three of my beginner's guide to growing this Nepenthes, or in fact, setting up uh, this little grow space that I've set up in um, an outbuilding here in the UK. I've got um, about 30 Nepenthes in here at the moment, and most of them are the easier varieties to grow, or would I, would I say starter plants? That we'd all start with. Um, they're all Highland Nepenthes. Um, I've got various types. I'll go through what I've got and I'll go through what I recommend that people start off with if you're going to start with Nepenthes in a, a grow space or a greenhouse here in the UK. I've added a few things to the channel, um, to the grow space, sorry. I've added an extractor fan for summer that's automatically controlled with a, a Wi-Fi um, signal box. I'll show you that in a minute. I replaced that heater. Um, if you can remember of part one or part two of this video videos, um, I had a tubular heater that was nowhere near gonna cope with 12 degrees in a winter temperatures in this grow space. So I bought, bought another fan heater. That'll show you in a minute. I'll get the camera down and I'll show you that to increase the uh, heat in here. I'm keeping the temperature in here during the winter at 12 degrees minimum. Um, the maximum will whatever I get during the day. But there again, if it goes down to, um, to 12, the heater will kick in. So it'll always have a steady lower temperature of 12 degrees C. Um, in a summer, I'm hoping to keep this at between 26, 28. At 26, I've got an evaporative cooler, which I've shown you the other week. That kicks on at 26, and at 28 degrees, the extractor fan at the far end kicks on. What you can see on the wall, more or less to the uh, left of the camera now. But let me get it down. I'll show you the changes I've made. Um, and then we'll get on to what I recommend as a starter plant because a lot of people have asked me what they would get as a starter plant and um, obviously other things. As you can see, most of my Nepenthes are hanging. I, I like um, my Nepenthes to hang rather than to be stood in a pot on the ground. And I, I can't do it to everyone because I've got that many, but I'll show you why I prefer this sort of pot, this hanging pot. So let me get the camera down and we'll go round and we'll have a look. Give me a second. Well, one of the improvements I've made on the grow space, as you can see clearly there, is an extractor fan in the, um, it's the north facing wall that is. So I've bubble wrapped it on the outside because it is an open vent. It just has two flaps on the outside and during winter, cold air could get in. So I've bubble wrapped it. It's all wired up to, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi signaler and um, I think it's really based for a kitchen but it does the job and um, for uh, two before eight square meters this grow space is so I thought yeah, I've got to do something to get the uh, warm air out of here in a in a summer so that's what I've put up there and I think it was about 17 pound off eBay or something like that but if it does a job it does a job and if you're thinking of setting up uh, growing the Nepenthes here in the UK, always consider the temperatures because Highland Nepenthes need it cooler than most other Nepenthes. Nepenthes. Um, so yeah, let me let me show you now the uh, new heater that I've bought. Well, as you can see, I've changed from the uh, tubular heater. This is a two kilowatt fan heater, electric fan heater. I can either have it just on fan uh, during the summer I can have it on one kilowatt, which is a fan plus a heater, or two kilowatt, which is a fan plus double power on the um, heater. It has got its own built-in thermostat, but I use my Inkbird temperature controller to uh, control it. And that has got to be a lot better than the tubular heater. I think I paid about £44 for that, but at this moment in time, it's never struggled with keeping the temperatures at 12 degrees. It's been absolutely brilliant. And it, as you can see, I've only got it on one, like the one kilowatt heater plus a fan. 
So let me show you the control panel now. Well, here you can see my uh, smart controller. Um, it's a bit awkward to get at at the moment, but you can clearly see at the top, it's got a Wi-Fi signal. Um, you can see it's giving me the temperature of 12.5. Um, whether that's correct or not, nobody's ever going to know because I've got a thermometer next to it that's saying 12.8. And it's saying the uh, humidity is 8 to 7.7. And I can believe that at the moment here in the UK. Um, that's what it does. Now, having this, you can set smart plugs to um, do anything. This sends signals to my mobile phone and to a smart plug. So once that temperature reaches, like I said before, 28 degrees C, it sends a signal to my phone telling me that the temperature's gone up and it also sends a signal to a smart plug and that smart plug activates the extractor fan. And while we're looking at this uh, controller, you can see on the humidity 85.6 at the moment in time, fluctuating, going up and down with the uh, humidity. But um, I don't have that control in anything. I use my Inkbird uh, controller for my humidity. All I use this for is an alert. Um, if for ever any reason my humidity drops to below 50 degree, sorry, 50% in here, I get a text alert on my phone telling me that the humidity has dropped which means I can come in here and if I've got a problem, resolve it. Because the majority of the time it will be one of my um, RAM foggers, which have an automatic cutoff. Um, and they could drain down and then they'll switch off. But if humidity dropped to 50 in here, then this would send me a signal telling me that I've got a problem. So that's another useful tool to have in a greenhouse. And a final thing about this uh, controller is I made the uh, beginner's error, really, of not having, um, well, what I did, as you can see, I lined all the walls with thermal aluminium. Um, it's a bubble wrap on the other side, it's an insulation and it prevented me from getting a Wi-Fi signal from the Wi-Fi in my house to this grow shed or grow space. So I had to buy a Wi-Fi extender, which is in the shed next door. I put a Wi-Fi extender in, and from then I've never had a problem. You can clearly see um, there's a good signal at the top and the battery's full battery. So that's is one of the things to consider. If you're using aluminium foil, you certainly need an extender to get the Wi-Fi from your house to your grow space. And also, <laughs> just looking at that, because it's showing you the battery symbol there. If the battery goes low, it also sends you a text alert telling you that you need to replace the batteries on your um, controller. One of the reasons um, it looks quite full in this grow space at the moment in time is because I brought a few additional things in. Um, not only have I got my Nepenthes in here, I've also got, um, you know I do farmer's markets and I also have a, an online shop. Um, down there I keep a lot of the uh, shop items, sorry, the farmer's market items and you can see they're all in here for the um, winter. They're growing on okay. Everything's looking fine in here. Um, I've also brought in my uh, small collection of um, bromeliads. Um, I like bromeliads. I don't know if I'm going to get in there to show you clearly some of my bromeliads, but I've got a few bromeliads that um, I kept outside during the summer and I brought them in for the winter. Down this side is nearly all the um, Mazda Valleys, which are due to go in this shop again over the coming weeks. They're all doing well. There's quite a few in here. But yeah, that's just to let you know why I've got so much in here at this moment in time. Before we look at um, 
what I'd recommend to have as a starter plant. But yeah, um, these pots. The reason I use these hangers is because they're reasonably cheap. Um, they do hold a little bit of water in the bottom. Not enough to rot your roots. It's basically um, a little bit of humidity and it will also give a bit more moisture to your sphagnum moss that you're growing as top dressing on your plants. I think I got 10 of these for um, about £16 off eBay. And I like this sort of pot. One, it don't spill water all over the floor when you finish watering. You do get some because obviously it's going to come through. But it does retain a little bit inside, inside that tray on the bottom. So now let's just have a look at some of the plants I have got. Looking at this one first, this is uh, Cross Ventrata. This is one of the plants I would certainly say to anybody, if you're going to start out with the Penthes, get uh, Cross Ventrata. It's one of the easiest plants to grow. Um, a lot of people will say get Ventricosa. Um, you probably could. But me personally, I find it easier to start with um, Ventrata. They're reasonably cheap nowadays. You can pick one up and start your collection off in the UK without any problem. As you can see, most of my um, Nepenthes, I'm allowing them to um, vine. Um, this one up here, I'm letting them vine because for me, it's another way of getting additional plants by taking um, stem cuttings and potting them on it makes it makes life a lot easier for me so I've got plants available to sell to other growers and I've also got plants that I can swap from other growers who haven't got um, a particular Nepenthes that um, I've got but um, just looking at some of mine I've got uh, this one here Louisa, which is um, Nepenthes Louisa, it's Rebecca Sopa cross with her suitor. Um, a nice little picture, only got two pictures on it. You can see that plant's got a double stem in there and it's pushing up another stem cutting or another stem shoot that I can um, take off or in a few months time give it to somebody else or sell it on this one here is my uh, Bill Bailey um, Singalana cross ventricosa a nice plant nice healthy plant got no basil shoots on it yet but um, a couple of nice pictures forming uh, that one's just about opening if you can see it that's just about to start open they've got one down here that's um, forming that won't be long for open. There's a couple open, but they're, they're dying back now and they're going back. But you can see they're quite impressive as a, as a picture on these plants. And there's more coming. There's another one here. So if you're going to get the penthis, start off with uh, something easy. I find all these in this greenhouse was quite easy. There's another vent. Ventrata, cross ventrata, which is ventricrosa, cross alata. There's a nice picture on it. Again, I'm allowing it to vine so I can get more uh, cuttings off it. I've got other other sorts of plants in here as well. Um, this one here is um, a couple of. This one's very slow. Um, I've had this for about a year now and it's just, since it's been in here, it's taken off. I've got two nice pictures coming there, one there and one there next to the label, if you can see it up there. And this one was um, Glandifleura cross Rob Catley Eye. Um, a nice little plant, nice bit of a leaf jump on this leaf here. Yeah. This one is uh, one of my uh, Nepenthes Gaia. I always find that Nepenthes have a really, the, the Gaia, have a really thin leaf. Um, nice pictures on the Gaia. All lower pictures on this plant at the moment in time. 
but um, you know, sphagnum's taken, so that's coming on. Yeah, that's another. This one is another Gaia, the Penthes Gaia, with some small pictures on, some larger pictures around the side. But they are as starter plants, they're coming on, and I'm sure in the future we'll have some lovely looking pictures on some of these plants. This one here is my uh, Rebecca Soper. Again, a nice health in the Penthes, pushing out nice new. Uh, pictures here a couple around the back going over now but again nice leaf jumps and it's starting to vine fine up yeah this this is Rebecca Soper and that is uh, Ramis Pina cross ventricosa and that is another easy one to grow down here I'm struggling a bit to get in. You can see I've got Nepenthes alata, which is a species, um, but an easy to grow Nepenthes. Alata is um, used in a lot of hybrids, the same as Ventricosa. Um, you can see it's got new pictures forming, a couple of old ones dying back. Very small plant, only had it probably five months top whack, but um, it's doing well in here. I think they're just some divisions, some of my divisions that um, I put on the shop. Here's my uh, Nepenthes scent Pacificus. Um, nice little plant. But what you need to remember is if you're growing in these pots, when this happens, you need to lift out. You can see that one's died back up. That's because it was growing inside of this hanging pot. Um, I've picked these out, so um, these are on another plant, but these was inside there. So what you need to do is make sure that when you do your regular watering or you're checking your plants, you lift any tendrils out of inside between the pot and the hanging pot. This one, um, you can see, look at that, how that picture is deformed because that has been hanging there on that pot and it's formed around the pot. It's got some nice new pictures forming on it. Um, another easy one really, another starter plant that a lot of people can um, start growing. So there's no excuse really to um, not start a nice Nepenthes greenhouse here in the UK. I mean, I watched some videos and there's some amazing channels out there on YouTube with all the details and how to grown nepenthes you know but um there's some let me just try and get down this end here's a new picture for me and i can't really get at it um with these hanging in the way but it's uh ventricosa cross talangensis but it's pushing up a nice picture there look um it's had a couple of pictures before in the other greenhouse but they didn't do much because I don't think they had enough humidity in the greenhouse at the time. Yeah, let's just focus in so you can get a good picture of that if I can. Yeah. So, yeah, that's most of my Nepenthes in this greenhouse um, that I'm growing on now. Getting ready, getting prepared for the winter. And uh, I'll show them you, show them you all how we've coped in the winter, and how, hopefully, how we keep it cool in here in the summer. So I hope you found this um, short video useful. Um, if you are going to give them a go, um, don't forget start off with um, ventricosa, cross ventricosa. Sorry, cross ventrata or a ventricosa um, you could even start with Gaia or any of these I've started with they're quite easy to once you get the temperatures right and you get the humidity right you'll have a wonderful collection and something to be proud of and I love showing showing off my collection whether it's Mazda Valleyers or Nepenthes all my carnivorous plants 
um, it's something that I enjoy doing it's my hobby and I like sharing it with people I've just uh, moved a few out of the way these here this is my um, sanguinea there's two lovely pictures on this sanguinea um, here's one here's the second there's the sorry there's three there's the third but they are a nice looking picture long thin pictures um, it's uh, getting a few on the top again but yeah another nice plant here I've got uh, my ventricosa um, some of the pictures are some of the pictures are now dying back i don't take the pictures off until they're all brown because as far as i'm concerned that picture is still giving nourishment to the plant um it's still got fluid in it it's still a potential to feed the plant so i don't take them off until they're all completely brown then i take them off here's one of ventricosa's pictures small picture very nice and here's the um, a new one forming. So yeah, that is Ventricosa. And that's what a lot of people do start with, um, that plant. Um, other things that I've been doing in this greenhouse is um, following on from my recent um, video, how, to, um, how I grow my sphagnum moss for top dressing. One of the viewers said to me, why don't I use one of my, um, I'll show you down here. I've tried it, but I don't think it'll work, to be honest. Um, a viewer said to me, why don't you use one of your trays and uh, put your peat moss in the bottom, then your, your dead sphagnum, then your live sphagnum on top to see if it'll grow. I've always covered it, but I've had a go. I'm trying it um, to see if it does work, but I'm not convinced it will, but only time will tell. So you can uh, see that. Another one of my uh, Nepenthes was my Fusca or Fusca, how people call it. Um, it had vined, it was quite a tall plant. I had it in my Mazzi house until I brought it in here, but unfortunately it got infestated with um, scale and I mean it was bad it was bad with scale um, I treated it I cut it right back um, I've took divisions off it now cuttings off it uh, as you can see now it started to grow again from the main stem um, putting out new new growths we put a small picture up nothing to shout about that in look but that's um that was all set back by having scale. Um, it's got a lot of new pictures forming here now and on the side and on the top. So I'm hoping now that um, after giving it that treatment, this comes on and becomes a lovely plant again, how it was uh, when I first got it. And the final plants I've put in this uh, grow space is my uh, bilbophyllums uh, I've got uh, four bilbophyllums Rothschilianum there uh, Ibarchii there uh, Tricetum there and I uh, forgot the name of that one but I've had them in the Mazzi house for um, well <laughs> for over a couple of years and my Mazzi house goes down to um, 10 degrees in our winter. I keep it at 10 degrees in the winter. And these have never done anything. Never put a spike up or anything. I've got new growths on that one there. You can see the new growths forming. But uh, they've never bloomed. And they're blooming size and they've never done anything. So I thought I'll put them in here for this winter. Give them 12 degrees, which is a little bit warmer than 10. And I'm hoping it may well do something. Well, thanks for watching, viewers. Hope you found um, that video useful. Um, all three videos, I mean, I'll put links in the bottom 
part one, part two, and this is the final part of my setup for my Highland Apprentice here in the UK. Um, I'll do a video, show you how we're going on in the winter, and I'll do a video how we're going on in the summer. And if I make any changes in here that I think are beneficial and will help you start up your own Apprentice Grove space, I'll add them as well. But if you're interested in the videos and you're interested in Apprentice, and you're a beginner like me, I've only been growing them for two years, two years now. Um, subscribe to the channel. Let's learn together because it's not just about me doing videos. It's about all the comments that I receive from other growers who are telling me, Mick, you've got that wrong or Mick, you've got that right. Or that was good. That was bad. So let's get something working together. You add your comments in. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up for the video. It always helps the channel. Um, it makes it a lot better for creators like myself to put videos out there, knowing that people are out there, think that you've done a good job or even a bad job if you want to, but you can do that. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. You will see my Nepenthes, my carnivorous plants, all my Venus fly traps, my Drosseras, and then you'll also see my Mazda Valleys. And Mazda Valley is, is really my passion. Uh, growing the Mazda Valley orchid is, is without a doubt my main hobby. And this is something else that I enjoy doing. I like growing these Nepenthes. They are beautiful plants and with the right care, we can all grow them. So until next time, viewers, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.